Welcome back to the workshop. This week's project is the piston for the cylinder for the Stuart number no. 9 engine. So we start by mounting the piston casting in the three jaw chuck so that we can turn down the spigot to give us something to hang on to when we machine down the other surfaces. Now I have changed the jaws on the chuck and I will mount the piston on the spigot. I will turn down the front and sides to rough size. Final shaping will be done later. There's a bit of a blowhole in this casting, but I didn't worry about it. Now I'm drilling out tapping sides for a 2BA thread and then I put the tap in there and get it started nice and square. Next I clean up the groove in the bottom surface of the piston using a nice round form tool. Here I'm using a boring tool to cut a little shoulder into the piston. This will let the piston rod seat uh, very positively on the piston and make sure everything is tight and square. So we're not relying on the thread, we're relying on that seat to make sure everything is perpendicular. Here I have chucked up a piece of square brass in the four jaw chuck. I'm going to use this to make a collar to hold the piston shaft. Using a piece of brass like this prevents the jaws from marking the shaft. Now I've transferred the piece of brass to the milling machine so I can cut a slit in the top right hand corner. And here we are back in the four jaw chuck machining our shaft. I uh, dialed it in using a dial gauge to get it as, as uh, cent centred as I could and the slit just lets the four jaw clamp the uh, shaft firmly uh, and uh, prevents any marks at all. It worked really well actually. Now I'm turning down the shaft so that the first section will just fit inside a 2BA die. This helps with alignment. Then the second section is machined to 2BA finished thread size. The last section is our mating surface with the piston. It fits the little rebate that we made with the boring bar. Effectively, effectively this is like a tiny little lathe spindle that we're making. The very last step is to use this tiny little tool to add some thread relief so that when we single point the thread the cutting tool's got somewhere where it can stop. And here we are cutting the thread and 
I have to reverse the lathe uh, to go backwards so that I never disengage the half nuts and I'll get it fairly close to finish size with single pointing and the final step is to finish it off with a die to make sure it's a nicely formed thread and you get a good finish that way. It guarantees it's really precisely aligned and there it is, it fit, oh, not quite yet. That's me testing it with the nut. Uh, it's a really good idea before you start cutting your thread to make yourself a test nut to test against uh, and uh, also to use that with the die to dial the die into a nice snug fit. There we are cleaning it up and it came out really well. Here I am um, re-centering the shaft with the dial gauge to make sure everything's square because uh, I took it out at, at that point and final test of the piston and I have to I have to um, really nip it up to get it over that little uh, mating surface works really well and the final step is to turn it to size on the actual shaft in the lathe so it's as perfect as it can be. I've dialed it in to less than a thousandth of an inch concentric and can't do better than that and now I'm going to turn it down to final size and once it's final size I'm going to put in the piston ring slot. It has one slot for the piston rings. There are two rings, they sit next to each other in one slot. This is a big moment because it's the finishing cut on the piston, so hopefully it'll be right. And we offered up the cylinder to the piston to see if it fits, and it fits very nicely indeed. Now I've put some black sharpie on here so I can use the tool uh, to I can touch off the tool against the piston when the sharpie uh, changes I can, I'll know that I'm right on the, on the money and also that my tool's square it's not perfectly square but it's pretty close it's within the thickness of a piece of sharpie I guess and now we're just plunging the plunging to depth the depth is quite critical you have to leave about ten thousandths of an inch uh, clearance um, and the width is also very tricky to get right it has to be it's 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 a snug fit but not a tight fit and ideally you want them to be even so I fiddled around with this with for quite a long time and went backwards and forwards and got it right and then just cleaning up the end there, turning off that centre. That's our piston end. Uh, there we go. That's our slider end. That's our piston. A bit of uh, blowout there. Won't hurt anything. And you can see I've got a little I've got a, just like the Myford spindle, I've got a little boss there. So that's a really tight fit. And uh, that squeeze, one, uh, that, that I've got to put that, I've got to use some mechanical help to squash that in, but that, that really is a nice positive seat. And once that's in, there's no wobble. And there are our piston rings. And there's about 10, as far as I can gather, um, I've got 10 thou clip. They're 10, they're deep, they go 10 thou deeper than the, than the edge. So hopefully that'll be all right. All right, so we got there in the end, as, uh, as you would have guessed we did from the intro. But uh, it came out really well, and I've set it up on the. Um, I've put the. Mount, I've tried mounting the piston on the bed plate, uh, which I don't have available at the moment because I'm actually just painting it. Um,
but I measured the squareness and the parallelism between this shaft and the bed plate and it came out uh, basically as good as I could measure. There's a little bit of play in it and that seemed to be in the middle of the you know where it needed to be for it to be parallel and also which is really satisfying is that the distance um, between this shaft and the base of the bed plate is exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, I forget what that is off the top of my head, but um, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, things are going really well. Thanks for watching, and uh, I don't know what we're doing next. Maybe the oh yeah, the um, probably the the slidey bit. See you next time.